What is up guys and welcome back to another video and today we are going over 10 things that Spongebob wants you to forget about and coming in at number 10 we have Gary and Patrick our first cousins. Gary and Patrick are such different characters personality wise in their appearance and by their roles in the show but interestingly they are actually close related to each other. In the episode Rule of Dumb we learned that Gary and Patrick's fathers were actually brothers which makes them first cousins. Patrick is blessed with royalty when a starfish comes and explains that he is the rightful heir of one of their ancestors, making Spongebob's best friend a king. Throughout the episode, we see Patrick abuse his power to get whatever he wants. Eventually the characters take a closer look at the family tree and underneath the stain reveals that Gary is actually the true rightful king. From here we also learn the relationship between Patrick and Gary. It's weird to think that Gary, Spongebob's pet and Patrick, Spongebob's best friend, share the same lineage but have such different lives. It makes the show want us to forget that such an odd family relationship could occur and also how unfair their lives are even though they originate from the same family tree. Number 9, Spongebob and Mr. Krabs are really old. Cartoon characters never seem to get older with time and so their ages are often left up to the viewer's imagination. However, in the season 1 episode, Sleepy Time, we get to see some of the driver's license of the show's main characters revealing some previously unknown facts about them, including their age. From this, we know that Mr. Krabs was born in 1942, making him 75, and even more strangely, telling us that the childish Spongebob is actually 31 years old, having been born in 1986. This fact doesn't quite seem to add up. When you do the math, that Spongebob has already won at least 374 Employee of the Month awards, meaning he's been employed at the Krusty Krab for at least 31 years. Seems like the stingy Mr. Krabs might actually be guilty of child labor. While we also get to see the ID of Patrick Starr in a later episode, the show chose to replace his date of birth with his weight being a surprisingly low 2 ounces. Knowing that the characters of the show are so much older than we likely thought makes them feel a bit less relatable. Number 8, the first Spongebob movie was meant to be the end of the series. I'm sure all of us has seen the first Spongebob movie and experienced the laughs, cries, and adventures it had to offer. And after watching it, we just wanted to see more Spongebob. However, creator Steven Hellenberg actually wanted to end the series right after the first movie was released. He had thought that the show's viewership and potential had already peaked, thus creating more episodes would be milking something that already passed. Because of this, Hellenberg chose to step away from the show and let his friend Paul Tibbet, a director and writer who was on the team for years, lead the popular cartoon. A lot of fans and viewers noticed a shift in quality and style for each Spongebob episode after the first movie, some saying that it was worse than before. After a long hiatus, Hellenberg thankfully returned on the team following the release of the not so highly praised movie, the Spongebob movie, Sponge Out of Water. I'm sure that the show wants us to forget that their star writer left for years, making the show not quite live up to the full potential or our expectations. Number 7, the Krabby Patty wasn't the first name given to the food. That's right, the iconic staple food from the Krusty Krab almost had a much less appealing name. Original concept art for our favorite yellow fry cook signature dish had it being called the Barnacle Burger, which isn't something I'd want to eat no matter how good Spongebob makes it look. This isn't the only bizarre fact about our beloved burger, it's also probably vegetarian. After all, since the main source of the meat under the sea is fish, the only options are that the Krabby Patty is actually a veggie burger, or the citizens of Bikini Bottom are actually some pretty sick cannibals. While I'm sure we've all been craving a taste of the patty that causes so much hype in the fun little town, both these ideas definitely give me some second thoughts. Number 6, Spongebob was supposed to be Sponge Boy. The name Spongebob is so drilled into everyone's mind that the title is widely recognizable to the degree of an A-list celebrity. The character's name, however, was not always supposed to be the iconic one we hear today, but rather Sponge Boy. The show's name was originally titled Sponge Boy Ahoy, but both the title and the name were changed for copyright reasons. A mob company shared the same name. In the beginning of the 90s, Early drawings of Sponge Boy showed him to have the exact same design as Spongebob we all know today, but instead, Sponge Boy wore a green hat. Hillenberg played around with this idea for a hat, but the idea was never sent with full force. 
The creator of the show also wanted to keep Sponge in the name because he did not want children or viewers to misinterpret the beloved Sponge for a block of cheese. It's good that Spongeboy's name was changed because the name Spongebob Squarepants has such a catchy sound to it and it holds a special place in a lot of people's hearts. Number 5. Squidward isn't actually a squid. Well, this just seems counterproductive, doesn't it? Despite his name attempting to declare Squidward's apparent obvious species, he actually is an octopus. This was revealed in a 2005 video from series creator Steven Hellenberg where he shattered the minds of all those listening. Being a marine biologist at first, Hillenberg is reputable for knowing aquatic life forms. Both of these species are at odds with the fact that Squidward has six limbs as opposed to eight that both squids and octopuses have. When questioned about this, Hillenberg explained that this was simply because drawing Squidward with eight limbs made him appear too crowded, and so his character model became the incorrect species of an octopus. It still makes you wonder what real impact this species has on the show and maybe whether Hillenberg releases this disruptive tidbit just to troll his enormous audience. Number 4, the characters in Spongebob represent the 7 deadly sins. Okay, so this one might be a little bit of a stretch, but it actually makes a lot of sense. Many have said that the main characters of Spongebob Squarepants represent the 7 deadly sins. Mr. Krabs represents greed, an obvious reference to the obsession he has with saving and earning any sums of money even if it's just a penny. Plankton represents envy. His jealousy towards Mr. Krabs' success is so evident and can be seen from every failed mission where he attempts to steal the formula. Sandy Cheeks represents pride, mostly because she frequently reminds her sea friends that she's a possibly superior land mammal from the proud state of Texas. Also, Sandy appears to be the most normal and humble character of the bunch, therefore giving her pride. Patrick represents sloth, clearly because of his constant laziness. Gary represents glutiny, due to the many episodes where we see him consistently eating mass amounts of food from his bowl. Squidward represents warmth, and is expressed through the frustrations he goes through at work and home. Lastly, Spongebob represents lust. This one may be a little bit far-fetched, but maybe his love towards all his friends and companions represents this. Number 3, Spongebob was called homosexual propaganda. Cartoons in general have created a ton of controversy in the past, and Spongebob Squarepants is no exception. For years, people have been claiming that the children's television show is homosexual propaganda for many reasons. For starters, Spongebob himself can be seen doing what some may consider homosexual acts. Examples include him being in a bubble bath with Squidward, or countless times that he and his starfish best friend are seen naked next to each other. For this reason, many parents did not like such scenes being presented in front of their children. Even back in 2005, it seemed that gay men viewership was going up for the show, causing even more controversy. The creator of the show tried to take out this blazing fire, as in an interview he states that Spongebob is asexual. Maybe this is his marine biologist showing, for many different species of sponges are asexual, or maybe it's just Hillenberg was trying to put this ridiculous and unnecessary claim to rest. This show definitely wants us to forget about all these allegations because at the end of the day, it's just a children's show that is meant to be fun and entertaining. Number 2, Spongebob makes some subtle drug references. The show itself has absolutely no direct ties to drugs and alcohol, but there are very subtle drug jokes that ironically appear on the very kid-friendly network, Nickelodeon. One example of this includes the Season 4 Episode 20, titled, Best Day Ever. This appears to be a reference to the stoner holiday of 420, a day in weed culture to celebrate the popular drug. This joke is so subtle because no one really keeps track of what season Spongebob is airing. Another reference appears in the title episode, Spongebob's Last Stand, where the Jellyfish song has lyrics that very clearly parallel the chorus of the subline song, Smoke Two Joints. Connections between the green drug and the Spongebob exist outside of the actual show, including the parody show, Sponge Bong Hem Pants. While this has no official ties to the real Spongebob and exists only as a joke, it's hilarious to watch as the main characters turn green and lives in a giant bong. His best friend morphs from Patrick to Hashbrick, and Squidward becomes a living joint. None of these jokes could possibly be targeted at kids, so you have to wonder who the writers think are really watching their show. Number 1, Spongebob includes a lot of oddly sexual jokes. It seems that in all children's cartoons and movies, 
There are some nods and attempts to slip in some adult jokes for the older audience, but SpongeBob SquarePants strangely has a lot of sexual jokes scattered throughout the series. The list could go on forever, but fan favorites include the joke about dropping the doubloons, or rather soap, and which is a joke about prison rape. Another obvious one is when Spongebob is alone in the living room watching some show about sea creatures. When Gary walks in the room he freaks out and switches the program to sports instead. What could he have been watching to make him so paranoid? Or what about the one time we see Spongebob blowing balloons that look very coincidentally like condoms before twisting them into new shapes? There's certainly plenty more of examples, but you get the point. I guess it's important for a show to appeal to a wide audience and not just the kids it's usually for. And that is it for the video guys, as always thanks for watching the video, I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more, make sure to follow me on Twitter at Valenplana and I'll see you all later.